Arts 173, and welcome to the tables unit. Um, the HTML tables allow authors to arrange data, text, preformatted text, images, links, forms, form fields, other tables, etc., into rows and columns of cells. Um, it's basically like a spreadsheet. If you have any, um, if you have any experience with, say, Excel or something like that, this should be no problem for you. It's not too tough of a, a unit. Um, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to use tables for laying out your design. You want to use CSS for that. Um, I find that most students coming into um, a class for web design these days don't even really know what that means because that's such ancient history that um, basically it's it's way way in the past at this point but um, still if you if you look up any information on tables the the whoever's telling you about them is probably beating themselves up over letting you know that you don't use tables for layout but they're still useful for their original tent intent which is communicating rows and columns of information in an organized format so we're going to learn how to create manipulate and style HTML tables in this particular unit. Um, so let's jump into unit four tables and um, this doesn't have a whole lot to it. It's, it's really quite a simple unit. I'm going to open the table start.html and I'm going to open um, wait hp table copy.txt. This is just the the text that we're going to use to make the table. And this is the, um, the starting file. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, let's do a save as. Whoops. Let's just call it index.html. And I can close that table start. And probably a good idea to give it a title. Let's call it um, horsepower to weight ratios. OK, and we can get started. Um, right at this part where it says insert engine horsepower table here, uh, we're going to grab that and we're just going to delete it and we're going to just choose insert table pretty this is really really simple um, and this is uh, the dialog where you create the table um, we're going to do five col five rows and four columns um, I think I've been I think it's gonna not show you the defaults you're probably looking at something else here so um, change your rows to five and your columns to four and for the table width, uh, we're going to do 90%. And this little guy might be on pixels by default. You want to change it to percent. A 90 pixel table is a very small table. So 90%, on the other hand, will make it 90% of the size of its parent container, uh, which can be a very useful thing, uh, especially in the next unit. We're going to talk a lot about those percentages. The padding and cell spacing we're just going to set to zero. The next thing down this is uh, something that lets you create table headers and columns and in this particular table that we're going to create we're going to use a header column on the left and we're going to use a header row on the top. Caption. You want you want to use this in your assignment this is part of your grade so make sure you put this in there. Um, we'll just call it horsepower to weight ratio. This text will um, appear on top of the table uh, and it, it increases the accessibility. It helps with people who have screen readers. Um, same with the summary. The summary doesn't really appear anywhere. We're going to call it how different engines compare in the horsepower to weight ratio category. The user doesn't see that. The user, um, if they're using a screen re reader, that will 
that will help them understand what this table is about. So um, that's another reason not to use tables for layout because that's gonna that's just gonna absolutely destroy your accessibility. Um, other than being very bad form, hard to update, um, unmanageable. Just in case those weren't enough, it also kills your accessibility. So we don't do that. Um, so click OK and here's my five row, four column table. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, now I'm going to take these pieces of text and these are kind of tabbed out in the way that your rows and columns should be. Um, actually this tab ended up a little further over. If you want to delete that, if it makes a little more sense to you, then feel free to delete that ex that stray tab there on the Porsche. But at any rate, um, so here's the top header row. We've already got this part of it. This is the caption. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste these. Uh, I'm going to use my shortcut keys because this is just basic computer usage stuff that you probably should know. Control C or Command C to copy. And um, Control V or Command V to paste. And your table, uh, the, the sizes of the columns will probably go a little sideways as you're doing this, as you can already see. Um, I don't understand why Dreamweaver does this, but as you're filling it out, it kind of the the sizes just get whacked out. They'll they'll normalize as we fill the whole thing out. So don't worry about it. Horsepower and ratio. Okay, and I'm just going to go through the table. I'm going to do this kind of quick because you know there's no reason to belabor the point. This is just basic stuff. I'm just copying and pasting. Um, and if you if you have a really big big table, you probably don't really want to do this. Dreamweaver does have import options. We don't really talk about them, but you can import spreadsheets and, and comma separated files and just kind of slap them right into a table and not have to do this. Um, for purposes of what we're doing, we're just doing it this way for simplicity. But if you if you find one day on your desk your boss says, here's my six zillion cell spreadsheet, uh, Excel spreadsheet that you need to make into a web page, then you probably just want to import that and not type it all out. Especially if you're salaried. If you're getting paid by the hour and you want to milk it, then that's your business. Okay, so just a couple more to go here. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Last but not least, the Porsche. And I'm going to save that last line at the bottom there for um, a little bit later. Two seventeen. There you go. There's my table. It's as simple as that. That's all there is to it, um, as far as creating the table. Now, I want to um, add that little citation in at the bottom. Um, and I didn't make enough rows for it, so this is pretty common. You might have to insert um, tables, you, or you might have to insert cells, you might have to insert columns or rows, whatever. I mean, that's normal table stuff if you're, again, at all familiar with tables normal stuff, um, simple stuff. Um, do, do, do. I thought it was on the insert menu. Let's just right click on it. So if you right click on it and choose table and you can choose um, insert rows or columns and that'll make it pretty easy. And we're going to insert one row below the selection and click OK. Okay, now this part at the bottom that says the source faster than you.com, we can copy that and paste it, but I don't want it to be 
just in one cell off to the side. I want it to be kind of centered in the whole table. So um, I actually want to select all these cells on the bottom row, and you can do that just by click dragging, just like that. It's a real simple thing. And I'm going to merge them down here in the properties panel. Um, it says merges selected cells using spans. So I'll click merge, and now our source is actually centered. Okay, so pretty basic. Um, table is there. The table is um, a table. It works. Doesn't look that great. Looks pretty plain here. So let's use it. Let's get some CSS going here. I'm going to go to my CSS designer and I'm going to add a source. We'll just review this. This should be pretty simple. Create a new CSS file and we'll just call it Oops, not tables.com, tables.css. <laughs> so actually, if you use a .com extension on a PC, um, I don't know if they even count that anymore as an executable, but um, that might might break things. So don't use that. Use CCS. Um, I'm sorry, for heaven's sakes. CSS is what I meant. I'm trying to call it College for Creative Studies, I guess. All right, so CSS. Um, and click OK. And let's go ahead and add our first selector, and we're just going to make a, a rule for the table. And we can just add some basic properties on the table. Um, this is going to style the table as a whole. Okay, and actually we're styling a tag, so if, if you have more than one table on your website, this is styling globally all the tables. Um, this, of course, has only one table, so this is the one we're styling. Um, we'll give it a background color of a light gray. I'm going to use um, EEE. Um, but by the way, these values are arbitrary. Um, I'm just kind of illustrating how to do this. Uh, I'm going to float it right. And of course, it pops out of the div when I do that because for some reason divs don't contain floated elements. I don't know why. I have no idea. But we'll fix that in a minute. Um, we're going to give it a top margin of 40 pixels. Push it down a little bit, give it some breathing room. And we are going to redefine the width now as 500 pixels. Right, and the border. Let's give it a border of one pixel solid, um, and the value that's used in your tutorial here, I'll just follow the tutorial, C69017. Cool. All right, so there's our table style, just as an overall, you know, general style. Um, I'm going to add a style now for the caption because there was a caption created that gives us a caption tag to style and we're going to give it a background color of that same light gray value. We're going to give it a font size and I'm going to use an M for this font size just for fun. 1.5 M and that pumps up the font size a little bit, makes it nice and big. And let's give it a font weight of bold. There we go. So, and the bottom row is being treated as a header, and that's giving it a little too much importance. Um, let's change that bottom row, instead of being a TH, which counts as a header, let's change it to a TD, which counts as table data or basically just a generic cell. Um, and why don't we just do that in code view? Um, I'm going to change it right here. So TD, and then you have to change the closing tag to So that changes it to a regular table cell now. 
and I'm going to create a class for this instead of using the header style. I'm going to give it a class called notice. Remember the class starts with that period, dot notice. Um, and why don't I go, I'll go ahead and apply it to this cell. Select the cell and there's my notice class. So there you go. Now it's applied to the cell. Um, get them all to appear again. Okay, and on the notice, let's create a font size of 0.8 m's. Let's give it a font style of italic. And let's give it a background color. Uh, this is really going to make it jump out. 039. Now, of course, the black text is pretty lost, so let's change that text to white. Remember, the color property is actually the text color. So let's change that to FFF for straight white. Straight digital white. Okay, so there we go. And we'll, we're will we going to do a little more to that. You know, actually, it seems like you're... you're um, Your, your tutorial doesn't have you centering it, but it seems like it should be centered to me. So I'm going to just center it. I'm going to give it one more property, text align center. Ooh, if I can type. There we go. Now we're doing good. Um, let's add another selector. Let's create one rule that creates padding for each cell. That includes the header cells, the, the regular cells, and the caption cell. So it's pretty easy. Um, we're going to do them all in one shot. And we're going to do it by typing it this way. TD, that stands for table data, comma, TH, comma, that stands for table header, and then caption. So, and then this, these commas, are like we're, we're applying these styles to each of these tags as if we made three separate styles one called TD one called TH and one called caption but we're just doing them in one shot it's a little different than this you don't want to type it this way with no commas because this means that we're we're now styling all the caption tags that are within TH tags that are within TD tags and that's not what we're looking for we won't be styling anything if we do that So there's our, there's our selector, and I'm just going to give it a padding of 5 pixels. And I'm going to, uh -huh, of course, I'm going to give it a text align center. Oops. Okay, so I didn't actually need to do that previous centering. Should have known I thought of that. Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and let's do one more. Uh, we're going to create a compound selector for table header dot left align, th dot left align. So all of these classes within table headers. That'll be pretty easy to apply. And we will give it a text align left and that's all it needs um, okay and let's apply that to the left column um, by the way let's take a look at this in a browser well let's let's apply that class there's the left align class okay so um, all of this is going to, all of these borders that you see here are going to disappear in a browser um, along with all of the, the stuff you see here is all helper, you know, it's all there to help 
create this table. When you look at it in a, in a browser and when you see what it actually is going to look like, that's kind of your, again, your gold standard. So that's what it actually looks like. Okay, now I want to insert the motorcycle at the end of the image and at the end of the document. And it can be rather tricky to get your cursor right at the actual end of the document. Also, I've got a stray tag here that doesn't belong. Um, so you might want to do this in code view. You can you can put your cursor right here and and insert it, or you can put your cursor in code view and insert it. Um, so I think I want to get rid of that opening and closing p tag because that's just a waste. And then let's insert image image, and it's got me in the wrong spot. I'm going to go back to my site root, and I'm going to go to my tables unit under graphics, and here's my image that I want. Okay, now does that seem a little wacky that that happened? Why did it? I had my cursor on the right, why did it go on the left? Well, that's because of that floating. This is floated to the right. So it's going to wrap stuff to the left that comes after it. So just keep in mind how floating works and it makes sense. Okay, um, one thing that we still need is a wrapper. Um, the wrapper div has already been applied. So it is it is in the wrapper in the HTML, but it doesn't actually have any styles. And again, those divs with no styles, it's like they might as well not be there. So let's add one more. And we're just going to style that wrapper. And we'll call it We'll give it a background color, FDF731. We're going to give it a border, 2 pixel solid, and it's going to be black, which is 000. Um, we're going to give it a margin left of auto and a margin right of auto so that it's centered. Um, and that, again, that doesn't do anything without the width actually being set. We're going to give it a width of 730 pixels. So that looks like what we're looking for. Um, it's a little crowded with the text. Again, if you give it a background color or a border, it's going to crowd that text. So um, we're going to need a padding. We're going to give it 15 pixels. And we're going to need... We're just going to give it a little bit of top margin just to push it down some. Uh, we're going to give it 60 pixels top margin. And we'll do a save all. Take a look in the browser here. Okay, so that's basically it. As you can see, pretty simple stuff. Um, all you need to know is insert the table, set the columns and rows, and style it. Um, you know, just use the, the styling rules that you've learned, the CSS rules that you've learned are all being used in the same way that you've learned. It's just a matter of applying it to a new element that you haven't used yet. And that's kind of the way it's going to be. Um, in a, you know, we're going to get into some hocus pocus, but that's kind of ultimately the foundation that you're going to build from. Okay, so have fun with your tables unit. Pretty simple unit, hopefully. Shouldn't have too much problem with it, and uh, have at it.